Hi and welcome to the Malak Cookery Channel. Today we're going to be making homemade crisps or kettle chips and these are a, a real talking point. You place a bowl of these in the centre of the table with a family barbecue or a get together. They won't last long but I guarantee that people will be asking you how you made them. It's really delicious and very simple to make. So this video will actually go through the basic principles of how to take raw potato, cook it in hot oil and end up with a really crisp product. So the spice blend we're going to be using today from the Demalot range is the French fry seasoning. So as usual, there'll be a full list of ingredients at the end of the video. Let's have a look at those ingredients, what we're going to need for today. Okay, so what we're going to need for today, obviously some potatoes, and these are Maris Piper potatoes, which have been peeled. A large bowl with some clean cold water in there. We're also going to need obviously the seasoning and we're using the Demalat French fry seasoning. A decent vegetable slicer in order to get those slices of potato as thin as possible. And then lastly we're going to need a, an oven tray with a rack inside. That will become obvious why we need that later in the video. First thing we need to do then is to obviously slice the potato and for that we need the uh, vegetable slicer. Never ever try and use a vegetable slicer without the attachment. This is what will save your fingers from being, uh, for the ends from being sliced off. I have seen it where someone's been slicing a carrot thinking, okay, we'll get down to about half and then place it into this. And the carrot has actually snapped and it's very close to them losing the end of the finger. So always use the attachment that comes with it. So we take the potato, place it into the attachment and then just simply run the uh, attachment or the, the potato down the blade in order to create the slices and the slices will go directly into the cold water. Anything, any larger potato, just be careful with it. So just a quick thing about the actual vegetable slices themselves. So I've gone through maybe three or four before I actually came to this one and the one thing that I hated about the others not that they they didn't work but what happens is when you get to the end of the vegetable some of them the gap between the top of this slider and this uh, holder is so wide that you end up with a big chunk of vegetable at the end which means you either got to slice it or throw it away this one I found doesn't do that at all it's absolutely perfect if I just get the box so that's the one this is the one that, that I use uh, all the time I found it to be one of the best of course if you use a, a vegetable slicer obviously not if you sell them but if you genuinely use one in the kitchen you found it to be good please put it in the uh, description because I'll share that with people so from here now what we need to do with the potato so the two basic principles of working with raw potato when we're placing it into hot oil one is we need to get rid of as much potato starch as possible the two reasons for that one is that potato starch is, is a very good binding agent and if we don't get rid of the potato starch from the surface of the potato what will happen is when this goes into the hot oil potentially it will stick together so you'll get lumps of either chips or, or um, crisps, kettle chips sticking together and then you won't be able to separate them. The second thing is with potato starch, potato starch and hot oil do not mix at all. So one thing that your local chippy or, or your um, fast food restaurant that use raw potato in order to create things like french fries or chips they need to get rid of as much starch as possible because it will destroy the hot oil which means that from a commercial business point of view they'll have to keep replacing the oil a lot more often so getting rid of the potato starch actually does two jobs which is great so what i'll do here is i give them a bit of a wash i'll let them soak for a few minutes and then i'm going to change the water once 
and then obviously give them a little bit of a wash again then leave them to stand for about 10 minutes in order to try and leach out as much of the potato starch as possible then we can go on to the next stage right so these slices of potato have now been stood in the second lot of water for about 10 minutes as you can see the water is very clear so we're confident that we've got as much as much of the potato starch as possible out of the potato the second principle about cooking with raw potato placing it into hot oil in order to get a crisp end product is to try and get rid of as much water vapor or as much uh, liquid out of the potato as possible the drier that the potato is going into the hot oil the more chance you've got of getting a really crisp end product when it comes out of the oil and staying crisp as well so the number of ways we can do this if we're preparing side dishes for a, a family barbecue the day before that would be absolutely ideal so what we do with this now is we would place this these slices onto the tray this is where the baking tray comes in okay making sure that they're fairly separate cover with a tea towel and then place into a fridge overnight now fridge is, is very dry air in a fridge and that will be sufficient to dry these potatoes out well if like me you want to actually uh, start the, the process and then finish with the end products within maybe uh, an hour or so, or so or half an hour then the thing that I'm going to do here is place the sliced potato onto the baking tray onto the rack these are going to go into a warmed oven so it's a warmed oven at around 50 degrees centigrade the oven's been on for about 10 minutes so you could quite easily place your hand uh, towards the oven feel the heat but it wouldn't be too hot and the oven's been switched off so these are now going to sit in that warmed oven for about 20 minutes to half an hour in order to try and get as much of the uh, as much of the water out of the potato as possible so we'll just simply take them from the water and just place them on the rack okay so these are now fairly well spaced out as I said these are going to go into the warmed oven for about 20 minutes to half an hour until we try and get as much of that um, water out of the potato as possible and this is probably the, the, the main reason why if you've tried making french fries or crisps in the past and they've come out of the hot oil crisp but then literally within 20 to 30 seconds they've started to become really soggy and sad it's because there's been too much water content within the potato when it went into the oil so 20 30 minutes we'll come back after that and i'll show you the next stage right so this potato is now dried out sufficiently to place it into the hot oil we've also got a bowl with some kitchen paper in there some absorbent kitchen paper and obviously we're going to be placing the uh, fried crisps or kettle chips into there once they're done We've got a very basic fryer here so this is a fairly cheap one about 25 pounds from a local uh, discount store and we've got this set to 180 degrees centigrade so we're going to load about half of these into the basket Okay, so the other thing I've got is a long slotted spoon. Remember, we are dealing with hot oil, so safety is paramount. And as the, um, as the kettle chips or crisps go into the hot oil, after about a minute or so, we want to try and agitate them so that they turn over and they cook on both sides. So once we've got them in a the basket, place them into the hot oil. And what you see here, this bubbling, this is all of the, the additional water that's within the potato actually coming out. The reason that we don't put too many crisps or kettle chips into the oil at the same time is that, I don't know if you can see it here, but the actual uh, machine has, has reduced in heat so much that it's had to, uh, the elements have had to kick in again. So we don't want to reduce the heat of the oil too much and placing too many potatoes in at any one time will do that so as they start to cook 
we just want to make sure we try and turn these over a bit so that they cook evenly on all sides. So I just want to show you this now. So we've got to a stage here where almost all of the water is now out of the potato but the potato is actually still quite light in colour. If we didn't get all of that water out of the potato what would happen is these would still be bubbling away and end up actually quite dark and you would just give up and take them out before all the water was out. So that's the crisp done now. What to do is just drain them off. And then transfer them over to the uh, bowl. Make sure that the oil has come back up to temperature before you put the next lot of uh, potato in. So that's the second lot of crisps done. Can we wait till all of that bubbling has gone away? We know that there's no water left in the potato at all, and these are fried to perfection. We'll drain them off into the bowl. And the next thing we're going to do now is obviously to season these before serving. So the last thing we need to do now is just to season the crisps or potato chips. As I said before, we're going to be using the Demalac French fry seasoning. But when you make your own crisps or your own potato chips, you can experiment once you've got the hang of it. Add different flavourings, see what works, what doesn't. And as I said before, these are such a draw at a family barbecue or a get together. So I just want to show you about the crispness of these. You would not get that. You definitely wouldn't get that texture, that crisp texture, if we didn't dry the potato out. Sorry, I couldn't resist. So that's it. Absolutely perfect. So that's it, homemade potato chips, crisps, kettle chips, whatever you want to call them, done to absolute perfection. This is one of those dishes, one of those side dishes that when you serve it at a barbecue or a family get together that people will remember and they will be asking you how to make them. Some of them won't even believe you, they'll be going to the uh, garbage bin to see where the bag is of, of kettle chips that you've emptied out, they just won't believe that you've done them at home. So as usual, please subscribe to the channel and if you've enjoyed the video, hit the like button. Thanks for watching, and I can definitely tuck into these now. Mm. Yep, absolutely beautiful.